This is going to be a video just to do a demonstration of installing Windows 11 on a MacBook or a Mac with uh, this one's on Apple Silicon using Parallels. It's very simple. Uh, I'm just going to click to add the plus button here to add. I already have Windows 11 on here, but I'm going to show up, you know, adding another virtual machine. You can run multiple ones if you wish. So they have it very easy. It's just a get Windows 11 from Microsoft button. Continue. Install Windows, and it's going to do it almost by itself. Now, the, the speed of your internet is going to make a big difference. Um, I have a gigabyte of internet, so hopefully it won't take us very long. Uh, it's very easy to do. It sets up your account based on, it will basically set up your, your user account based on what your Mac user account is. And it'll, you know, you'll be able to share files between the desktop of the Mac and Windows. It's very easy. Um, now, this software is not free. It's, uh, it's a subscription service, or they do have some options for the limited version that you can uh, pay just for one time. But it's probably it's the best one on the Mac. There are free versions. VMware does have a player that, uh, that you can, at this moment, you can still register for and get a free license. It's not as sophisticated or as good as the one in Parallels here. There's also KVM that you can do for totally for free also. It's much less user friendly. I can do videos on those if this one is popular. Uh, we're getting pretty close now to downloading it. And um, you see this is not scary at all though. Um, Now you can also, you don't have to install Windows 11. You, you, know, you can also install Ubuntu and various other things. You'll see here, you know, you can download Ubuntu. You can do Ubuntu with x84 emulation. Oh yeah, also if you're on a Mac, an Intel Mac, you can just download VirtualBox and do it for free. Their VirtualBox has not updated their software or made a version that's for Apple Silicon. I wish they would, but they, they haven't. Okay, if you see it's already in the installation assistant. Now, if you have a slow internet connection, this part would have taken longer. And this is gonna have some of the, some of the same aggravations with setting up Windows as a normal Windows install, but it's, it's not bad. If you're not used to installing Windows, don't let this scare you it'll, it'll it basically walks through it by itself almost now why would you want to run the reason for running this windows obviously is if you have a specialty piece of software that you want to run that's windows only software you can do it with this you can also just do it for testing you know, I, I know people that, you know, they use Macs, they're software developers, they want to test some Windows software, or they're, they manage other people's computers, they want to use a, a copy of Windows to do that with. It's also great for testing, because one thing you can do, like you can see here on my other one, you can also click in the settings and take snapshots. So, say, one reason to use a virtual machine would be, I want to take a snapshot of this machine I want to install some software on there. It might be risky. It could mess up my system. I don't know if I like the software. So I could take a snapshot, test the software, do whatever I want to do, basically, and then just roll back. This is where the snapshots were. So, you know, you could make a snapshot, do anything I want to the computer and roll it back. And uh, so it's a better way to test software than using it on your main system. Virtual machines are fantastic for things like this. Uh, Ubuntu machine is great for just, you know, browsing the internet, going to sites that you maybe you don't want to have in your main system. You just want basically a disposable operating system, and virtual machines are a good way to do that. It's rebooting again now after it copied. This process won't be too terribly long.
Um, I have tested this. This runs very well on this computer. Um, Windows 11 runs great. If you use the Edge browser, you know, the, the speed the speedometer tests on it, browser benchmarks are very good. Um, Ubuntu, and I may make a video, if this one gets any views, I may make one on Ubuntu. Ubuntu runs on a virtual machine on the Apple Silicon with very, it's the ARM version of Ubuntu. It runs with very little overhead, very little, and it's very fast. I'm sorry, this one's a lot of basically waiting and listening to me talk because we're waiting on Windows. And you, you know, this one you renamed it for me. It made an automatic name, but you can change it to anything you want later. And it's getting closer. I am going to install Ubuntu on this Ubuntu on this computer, so I may do a uh, video watching that. It's even faster because as everybody that has ever installed or maintained a Windows system knows that it's always looking for updates. It's actually fifty thousand questions. This one is going to do some of the setup for us, though. It's going to restart one more time. But you see, we haven't done anything very technical yet. And now I'm getting close to the end here. This is very, very user friendly. I have on this channel installed Windows and virtual machines a number of times, but it was either in Proxmox or in or in uh, I haven't done it in Hyper-V on t on camera yet, but you'll see it's. This one's very simple and very easy for straightforward. I really don't need this on this computer. It's just for testing and playing. I like to have virtual machines because the, there's a Windows computer right next to this Mac that has uh, Hyper-V, which is the Windows built-in hypervisor for Windows 10 and 11. And I, behind me, have a Proxmox, which is a dedicated server that runs virtual machines. So I have both of those beside me. Really don't need it on this computer, but it's, it's always fun to have it and test and play. But, you know, this can be a good way to do work. If you want to run software, it's maybe not on a Mac, which is less and less important these days than it used to be. But, it, you know, there are some software that's only on one platform or another. Okay, now it'll we'll have to click to continue. I'm going to accept the agreement. And let me close this, and I am in Windows. It was that fast and that easy. Now you see this Mac files here. This is letting me see uh, into my desktop of my Mac and I really don't have anything on the desktop. But let me make a text file here and I'll see if that appears on the, on the Mac's desktop. There it is. So I can type something in here, typed on the Mac and close it and then when I come over here and open it you'll see it's the same document it's sharing the file oh well we'll have to fix that but uh probably needs to be reviewed now you don't have to leave it you can run it also with Mac apps we in coherence mode where it'll show them side by side I don't want to turn that on on this one because I'm going to throw this machine away you can also click here and just go to full scale so now it looks like I'm on a Mac and I can always if you're on a laptop, you can three finger swipe left and right. Or if you're on a desktop, you hold down control and arrow key. And I can just toggle. You know, I don't have to have this open. I can just toggle between Mac and Windows, Mac and Windows. And you'll see it actually runs quite well. If you can get past all the nag screens from Microsoft. 
let's go to my YouTube channel. And you'll see it's it's running fine. It's running just fine. I can go full screen. It runs fine. And that was all there is to it. And then of course I can just close this Windows machine like I would a real machine. And if I want to reopen it again, I can just double click. And I'm back in Windows that fast. It's that fast. All right. Now I just wanted to make that quick video.